bit of uh, glossiness. Uh, the hair is kind of getting curly in the back and everything. So anyways, um, post some comments. Uh, if you've got questions on this, I hope this helps. In the comments section, I will have a doc that we've had out previously with hooping caps. Talks about how you can figure out what size design a cap or a visor can actually support. So that's a really important thing, right? Um, in the flat world, we're used to everything being hoops that um, kind of tell us how large our designs can get. But um, when it comes to caps and visors, we need the front or the crown of the cap to, to tell us some information on how large um, our design can be. And, and so in general, what that document says is I need to come up about a quarter to a half an inch away from the bill. So this part here is the bill. I need to come up and just to be on the safe side, you know, a quarter to half inch. And the reason I say that is it really kind of depends on um, all the stuff that comes together when the hat is. And let's see if I can find a better way. Let's move over to this image for a minute. Um, kind of depends on how much stuff is in here. So you've got the sweatband, the bill, the crown, um, all that comes together right down here in this area. And so what happens as we come back to this screen, I'm, I'm, I'm running solo today. I got Nate and Scott are busy working with uh, customers and um, Nate's working on some really exciting stuff with a, a new version of Design Shop coming out. So I'm really excited about that. So flying solo, so bear with me. But, um, you know, as we look at the cap, we can see that it ramps up, you know, um, sorry, a visor. Thank you for correcting me all out there, a visor. So what we're going to do, the way that the embroidery machine sews a cap is it will swivel left to right and then front and back. So it basically treats a cap or a visor um, or anything else that we use on the cap driver. That's that red ring. Or if you have a really um, uh, older machine, it might be a, a silver ring, but for the most part red. Um, you know, it's going to treat everything like a cylinder. So um, front to back, left to right. So everything is in a cylinder motion. But as we look at visors and caps, really um, kind of like our head, and luckily I don't have any hair because it'll be a good uh, explanation of it. Might not be a perfect sphere, it's kind of bumpy, but um, it is more of a sphere, kind of like the earth, a, a globe, um, a ball. Um, so what we have to do as embroiderers is we have to trick the machine that it is going to sew on a cylinder or a, a sphere shape in a cylinder way. So how we do that kind of depends on the cap. So once again, read that document, understand how far up you need to come from the bottom and then how far up on the visor you can go all the way up to the very top. Um, Typically, there'll, there'll be a seam right inside. And so once again, let's go back over to this screen here. And so you can see that seam maybe about a quarter of an inch in from the top. Um, typically, you want to stay within that area. And it's best if you can center your design in there. Um, so that's going to tell you how large design you can put on it. Um, uh, no, you can't take, uh, you know, the normal two and a quarter inch design on a, on a high profiled structure cap and put on a visor. Um, we have to, it's good to have some props around um, if you've got a storefront or some props that you can show online uh, or in person uh, if you're going out to see an account to explain how visors work. Um, typically, you're going to be on normal visors, you know, this visor here, if we subtract that half an inch, we're at about a, you know, we're at two inches from the bill to that seam that I was talking about. We subtract that half inch. We've got about an inch and a half to embroider with. That's about the largest space that we can do is about an inch and a half. The other thing that's important about the visor is not all visors are, um, are made the same way, uh, just like a cap is, okay? So there are some caps that... Um, you know, let me find, uh, as I look at my visors here, this one is a good example. It's got some real good structure to the crown. Um, so it doesn't have a lot of uh, floppiness or moving around. So when I hoop this one, I can just use one piece of cap backing and I don't need to worry about adhering it to the crown of the cap or the visor in this case. 
Now this one, um, you can see how flimsy it is. And let me once again switch over to this screen and you can see, if I can get the image there, you can see how it's almost like a shirt type of material, how it waves as I bend it. So with this type of material, there is not a lot of buckram going on on the crown of this cap. So my suggestion would be is that you take a piece of cap backing. Um, it's really important that you use cap tearaway backing when doing visors and caps. Um, tearaway, uh, regular tearaway sheets for flat goods is not structured um, and doesn't have kind of the, um, the strength that cap backing has. It's a, it's a totally different um, type of feel and gives a, a whole lot more stability to the cap as it's being sewn um, or visor in this case. So I would take a piece of this and I would add spray adhesive and then adhere it um, to that cap. So we're gonna hoop a couple of these up, but before we do, I just wanna show you a couple examples. And let me just wipe my brow here for a second. I apologize. It's air conditioning, maybe not working here today. So um, God forbid if I was actually down in you know the South or where it really is humid, I'd, I'd be a swampy mess right now. So um, this cap here, uh, and let's switch back to this so you can see the design really well. Um, it's a really cool design. Let's see if I can get it in focus. Right about there, it's pretty good. Um, so this design is right at about an inch high. Um, and what I did was I took and I temporarily adhered the backing to the cap. And you'll also see that I wrapped that backing all the way around to the post and then took and put two clips um, on those. Sometimes with uh, visors and certain types of caps, you can actually use the straps um, to hold that on. But the important thing is, is if the cap or the visor doesn't have structure, take and use a piece of um, cap backing and use a little bit of embroidery spray adhesive. Now, the stuff that I use, hang with me here for a second, the stuff that I like to use is the stuff from Adira. Um, again, let's switch over here where you can see this a whole lot better. So this is the uh, Madeira Temporary spray, uh, spray Adhesive. The, I think it's called the MSA 1100. Um, there's some other really good brands out there. Uh, um, comment on the ones that you guys like. But it's really important that we use embroidery spray adhesive because if we use just like uh, 3M spray adhesive that's super strong, that'll gum up our needles real quick. That'll also start to gum up our hook and bad things happen when that, when that happens. So just as all we think about, you know, speed of the machine, let's say we're running our machine at a thousand stitches a minute. The hook has to make two full rotations to every one penetration that the needle makes. So if, the, if we're stitching at a thousand stitches a minute, that means the hook is rotating at 2,000 rotations a minute. It just blows my mind how fast things move um, in our world. But if you introduce the wrong kind of adhesive in there, the point is um, you could really gum things up. <laughs> Hopefully you got my joke. Uh, bad one at that. But anyways, um, we'll take and unhoop this, um, this visor. Um, and by the way, these visors were provided to us uh, from uh, Sanmar. Sanmar's got some really good um, uh, visors. They've got uh, Nike visors. Um, most of these, I think, are the uh, Sport Tech. Um, but, you know, I've got some different colors. I've got a blue one. I've got a really cool, uh, here's another one that we sewed that has like cool white stripes on it. Um, you know, if you were doing these for, let's say, a, a ball team, like a softball team or something, you could come in and you could add a number on the side uh, with using the, the wide angle cap frame and actually sew that number at the same time. Um, we've got some instructions and some other videos that tell you, you know, how to make sure that design is straight as you hoop the cap or the visor in this case. So check out those other videos. We'll try to post those uh, links in this as well. Um, but we will flip over and we will hoop this uh, this black one that um, this black visor that has uh, hardly any structure to it whatsoever and hopefully be able to show you how to do that. Now, the reason that we're 
before we go over there, the reason that we're trying to adhere the backing to this visor is we want, once again, to fool the machine. It, in my mind, this is how I explain it. This is the best way that I understand it, is when, when we put this onto the machine and it's doing its thing, we don't want the material moving around on us. So we wanna give it temporary structure and that's what the cat backing adhered to it is going to do. Now, some folks will say, well, Mike, I, I put backing in it and I'm breaking needles. To me, that means you probably need to use a little bit of embroidery spray adhesive to make sure that this has some rigidity or stability. So as the needle goes through and goes through the needle plate, that that material isn't waffling or, or waving on us as it's happening. Hopefully that makes sense. But it... Um, it really works well. Um, you know, a lot of times on unstructured caps, uh, I will for sure take and adhere, you know, with um, embroidery spray adhesive, my first piece of embroidery backing. And depending on how thin, let's say it's like windbreaker material, um, I may go in and add a second or a third piece of cap backing um, to, to build up that structure. And some of the arguments that I hear, and I get you guys, I understand where you're coming from. Um, well, that's a waste of time. I might not need that. That's great. If you don't need it, that's awesome. But in my um, kind of my experience, the more I do that, the more I prep that. Um, and it's, you know, yeah, it is an extra five or 10 seconds to add the spray adhesive to it. But if I do that, the product looks so much better for my customer that it's night and day different. And that to me is very important to get that quality. If I shortcut it, if I try to round corners, it shows. Um, so it's really important that uh, you know, take the time to, to do those things correctly. So uh, with all that said, let's jump over to the cap gauge. So this is our cap gauge. And I'm gonna just wipe my brow one more time. I apologize for that. I'm gonna take my cap frame and I'm going to put my cap frame on there so you can see all that happening. Um, I'm going to take a piece of my cap backing, um, and this is the white cap backing from Madeira. Um, they have some new stuff out, and let me grab that real quick and show it to you. Uh, it's inside of the, the gauge. Um, it is black cap backing, and it's about, if I hold the um, the white up, it's about a half inch um, wider, um, which I really like. And then once again, people will say, well, you don't really need that width um, for visors, but the, the wider that is to a point, the more stability it has down in the sewing area. Okay, so enough said with that, I'm going to, and typically you would wanna go outside and spray your spray adhesive, but I'm doing this just so you guys can see approximately how much spray adhesive I need. It's important that you get enough on there that as the cap or the visor in this case is stuck to it, that it actually will stick. So once I have that on there, I'm going to just go ahead and slide my backing on. I do like to make it, and I made this piece just a tad bit short, but it's still going to get there. I like to get it to where it gets behind um, those posts and you might not be able to see those posts. Let's rotate just a little bit, but these black posts are what I'm talking about. Um, and this is using the, uh, the cap frame uh, that came with most of you guys' uh, equipment, um, the wide angle cap frame. I know that some of you really, really like the, uh, um, uh, the what is it called? The uh, um, Mighty, or not the Mighty Hoop, but the Hoop Tech, um, it used to be the Dream Frame, but now I think it's the Gen 2. That's what it is. Thank you, the Gen 2. Um, I'm a big fan of the wide angle, but if you're a fan of the Gen 2, the same concept applies. Once again, if, um, if you have any kind of waffle or um, flagging where it doesn't have a lot of stability to the crown of your visor, take and use this method. And then, so what I'll do also is I'll take and go ahead and pull the... Um, the Velcro off and I'm going to pull down my sweatband as you can see and I'm kind of holding it like this and then I'm going to come in and set my visor down and it after you get the hang of this it, it helps a lot but once you know once you get it going 
you pretty much have to go with where you're at um, because that that cap backing with the adhesive on it is pretty dang sticky. So um, I'm taking my time to show you how to do this. Once you get going, you're going to be a whole lot faster at it than I'm showing you right now. But what you can do is you can see how I'm working my hand back and forth on that crown area where we're going to embroider. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work out any kind of wrinkles um, that are in the cap. When sewing a cap, we want to make sure that our embroidery design um, is bottom up and center out, for sure center out. So if we have lettering, let's say we're doing Melco, for sure we don't want to go M-E-L-C-O because what you'll do is you'll see this big um, waffle happen or, or um, uh, wrinkle in the, the material because as we're sewing it, the embroidery is pushing that material around, okay? So back to this, um, I'm going to try to catch both sweat bands um, with the strap and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to feel, and I get pretty good with uh, feeling this, I'm going to feel for that clip. I might have to move my backing out of the way. Yep, it's in my way. So once I get that out of the way, I can get that in there. And um, from there, I'm going to take and make sure the hat is just slightly, as I'm looking at the gauge, slightly to the right, because as I close, and I'm going to pull down as I'm closing on the straps, as I pull down, the hat is going to have a tendency to rotate from my angle slightly to the right, okay? Um, you'll notice that on visors, um, at least majority of the visors that I see, and I'm going to try to get this to where you can see it. Uh, let's see, yep, you can see it. So there is no center um, to this visor. So there's just a, a seam here and a seam over here. So what I want to do is make sure that I'm fairly centered and then I can um, either take a piece of um, seamstress or tailor chalk um, or an invisible pin and mark the center if I need to make sure I'm absolutely center or if I can just center off those two seams, okay? So once I have that done, I'm gonna rotate my um, visor over. And in this case, I'm gonna use the strap to hang on. So instead of clipping it, I'm gonna just use the Velcro of the strap to tighten that down. So as I take it off the um, frame, and how I like to do this is I take the palm of my hand, let's see if I can see the palm of my hand and my fingers, and what I do is I collapse my fingers to the palm of my hand. So here are my palms, here are my fingers, and I'm gonna just take and condense and then pull off. So let's go back to the main screen. Um, and you will see that I've got a really nice hooped visor. Um, yes, the backing is sticking up top, but we're gonna, once it's done embroidering, we'll take and rip off that backing. Um, but this is going to sew really nice for me. What won't sew nice on this again is if I push that limit, if I start doing an inch and three quarters or two inches design on this where I can only get an inch and a half design, it's gonna cause me problems. So that's probably the, the two biggest places that I see people um, start to get fouled up with, um, with visors is the first one is, is they try to do too big of a design on a visor. Um, so use that document, figure out how much space you have and not every visor is the same. I've, I've actually seen a couple visors where, you know, I was able to get two inches of embroidery space out of it, um, but they kind of look weird on people's heads. They're too too fat. It looks like someone chopped the top of the, the ball cap off instead of it being a visor. Um, so that's the first one is they use too big of a design. The second one is if it's a uh, unstructured visor crown, um, they don't adhere the cap backing to it. Um, or they don't use cap backing at all, um, and that material just has a tendency to just move because we only have one place here that we're holding it. That's one nice thing about the Gen 2 is you at least have the post off the sides to hold it as well. But even in that case, um, if you're not given this some temporary stability while it's being sewn, that Gen 2 um, is going to give you poor registration, just like the wide angle cap frame would, it's going to give you poor registration. The first thing that we're going to blame that on is the machine and the hoop. 
Um, really, it's not that, it's that you didn't give it stability. Um, it is an extra step, I understand. Once again, build that into your cost and, and margin so that you deliver a quality product to your customer. So we'll be answering questions. Um, uh, we'll be answering questions on this on Facebook and YouTube. By the way, thank you for joining us. Um, we'll also post, there's really good, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, Dan Sweeney is our um, manager of our tech support group. I hope I got that right, Dan. I really try. Um, but he does a phenomenal job. Him and his team do a phenomenal job of keeping um, an FAQ um, or a questionnaire site um, up and, and relevant for us. So I'm going to post that link because I personally use that site probably two or three times a day. Um, majority of the time I'm watching one of my buddies like uh, Josh or, or John LaDrew or Nate or Scott um, or myself even doing something, but it's just, it's good reference for me. Um, I would suggest putting that on your favorites, um, put it onto your, your toolbar and uh, in whatever web browser you're using, and, and then you can just click on it, type in, you know, what you're searching for. Um, maybe it's sewn on visors here in a bit. You'll be able to get to this video, um, but it's a really good way of getting that information. Um, I hope this helped a lot. Uh, once again, uh, you could use either the wide angle cap frame, you could use the Gen 2s, um, uh, either one used right and understanding the visor that you're working on and, and its, um, its advantages and its disadvantages and, and you know, boosting it up like in the stability that we talked about, it's going to really improve your, your stitch quality and your overall experience of, of how that sews out on that cap. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.